good evening doctors welcome again today we are going to discuss about a live case of my patient which i visit her today and today our topic is hemorrhagic stroke yes guys uh, my patient uh, also had suffering from this hemorrhagic stroke from yesterday night and uh, today morning uh you already saw her and uh, she is suffering from hemorrhagic stroke because her bp is so high now what is hemorrhagic stroke we can blood vessels ruptures allowing bleed into brain so hemorrhagic stroke is a weaken or diseased uh, blood vessels rupture is seen in picture her case is also same hemorrhagic stroke is two types intracerebral hemorrhage and subarachnoid hemorrhage higher mortality rates when compared to ischemic stroke and uh, you see in diagram uh, intracerebral hemorrhage and subarachnoid hemorrhage and my patient is suffering from intracerebral hemorrhage due to high very very high bp she is in another state and today morning she visit in our city so she is diabetic also but diabetic is not a reason Uh, because her blood pressure is uncontrolled and uh, she is on irregular follow up that's why she is suffering from this and uh, this is really life threatening okay let's discuss more types of intracranial hemorrhages intracranial hemorrhages include intraaxial it include intraparenchymal intraventricular or extra axial is subdural subarachnoid epidural which is visible here in front of you yes see subarachnoid subdural intracerebral and uh, which i told uh, my patient has uh, intracerebral hemorrhage yeah now high blood pressure the causes of stroke hemorrhagic stroke strokes are mainly two type ischemic and uh, hemorrhagic here we are going to discuss about hemorrhagic stroke high blood pressure my patient suffering from high blood pressure she is a uh, irregular follow up from last one year she haven't visit me and today i knew that uh, she had a brain hemorrhage and uh, her uh, light, right portion right hand and right leg no movement no movement but she is conscious after my treatment high blood pressure i am physician and she is admitted in neurology department but uh, with the help of me and uh, both we together like to treat her aneurysm is a cause trauma is a cause tumors is a cause abnormalities in a blood vessels and atriovenous malformation is a cause but her cause is high blood pressure now symptoms of hemorrhagic stroke that is hemiparesis in my patient right hand and right leg no movement confusion but she is oriented after treatment dizziness and loss of balance so when right leg and uh, right hand is not working that means no balance difficulty speaking or understanding his speech yes she has aphasia but now after treatment she is i saw some improvement sudden or severe headache now no headache loss of consciousness she is conscious fully she understand me knuckle rigidity yes visual disturbances yes little bit her visual disturbances and tinnitus yeah so hope this is very much uh, helpful for you age my patient age is 50 years sex female she is race asian american white she is indian and uh, cerebral amyloid angiopathy coagulation disorders no she do not have such history modifiable risk factor hypertension she is hypertensive but irregular follow up and that's why she is suffering from now complication cerebral amyloid angiopathy yes cholesterol anticoagulation yes when somebody is in anticoagulant therapy and doses are very high then it causes antiplatelets high alcohol intake but she is not alcoholic no smoker she is uh, not smoking but smoking is a modifiable diabetes she is diabetic microbleed dialysis she is not on dialysis drug induced cocaine and amphetamines so these guys now what how to differentiate so i already ordered when uh, she visit in my hospital 
uh, head of city and uh, I found out that uh, she is suffering from hemorrhagic stroke, not ischemic stroke. ECG we can do to identify MI, large inverted T waves, but no MI there, her ECG is normal. Labs, uh, similar presentations, CVC we found thrombocytopenia, PT, PTT, coagulopathy as causes, but these are normal for her. And MRI we see aneurysm or atriovenous malformation as cause of bleed, so MRI I haven't ordered. And CT angiography recommended patients less than 45 years, but her age is 50, so no CT angiography. Patients intracerebral hemorrhage is lower brain reason, invasive angiography. I ordered her complete blood count, uh, electrolytes, cardiac enzymes, creatinine, creatinine her normal. Blood glucose, her blood sugar is 180, HbA1c is 6 now. And PTPI, thromboplastin time and oxygen saturation. She is on oxygen. Uh, her saturation is 99 with oxygen and on catheter I already decide to put her. And uh, this is the treatment of hemorrhagic stroke, nemodipine. Nemodipine, but in India we like to use Nicardia that is nephedipine, reduce the incidence and severity of neurological deficit, delayed ischemia. Dosing in subarachnoid hemorrhage that is 60 mg every 4 hours initiated on diagnosis for 21 days. In case of hypertension, same total daily but frequent dosing or 30 mg every 2 hours. Reduce totally daily dose is 30 mg every 4 hours if hypotension, maintain vascular volume, vasopressin therapy if hypotension. So guys, this is not exact the same. We are managing uh, by watching her blood pressures and uh, her vitals. I gave her Nicardia 20 mg twice a daily and she's good. Her blood pressure is now 140 and uh, 90. Her pulse is 78, no, and she is feeling better and I tell you later the treatment. Management of a hemorrhage stroke, patient presenting with blood pressure 150 to 220 mmHg, acute lowering of blood systolic pressure is 140 mmHg is probably safe. Management of seizures, if any, acute management of seizures entail administrating lorazepam, or by intravenous phenytoin, phosphenytoin, valproic to manage the seizures. But in my patient, uh, I like to give mannitol, uh, nicardia, and normal saline to maintain her uh, sodium level. So guys, and uh, every patient depends doses according to her body weight and her vitals. They respond differently to their uh, medications. And some more treatment I like to give, like uh, how to recover, some vitamins also I like to provide with this to healing and physiotherapy is recommended. Prognosis of intracerebral hemorrhage, poor prognostic factor and good prognostic factors. If the large and deep lesion that is poor prognostic factor, depth of the conscious level and flexion and extension to painful stimuli, good prognostic features, small superficial hematoma. In my patient, she is, has good prognostic factor and conscious patient. She is conscious now. Overall mortality ranges from 55 to 65 percent. Yes. And 90 percent of patient is in coma. But my patient is still conscious. She is aware. And uh, I hope she is going to recover 100 percent. And uh, if we find the early prognosis in hemorrhagic stroke, that is poor. But in late prognosis, that is good. She is suffering from hemorrhagic stroke. And uh, we need to wait for her recovery as soon as possible. Ischemic stroke, uh, fair early prognosis and late prognosis. So guys, uh, maximum recovery with a stroke occurs within 7 to 14 days. So I need to wait for 2 weeks. And uh, I pray with God also that she will recover fast as soon as possible. So I decide to make a lecture on this and I really like to make it interesting because I discuss here some case with you and uh, guys hope everything is fine but the treatment regimen is not the same as written in a book doses. We have to vary the doses according to our experience everything we need to watch and we need to administer what she want and even I like to give her some antibiotics also because her TLC raised in such conditions. So there is not exactly same always which written in a book. Sometimes some things were different and we need to find the cause always and always. Thank you. Good day and goodbye. 
होप दिस इज वेरी मच इंटरेस्टिंग फॉर यू